Choosing the right tennis string can be super confusing and frustrating. There's so many choices out there and so many opinions about what's best that I wanted to make this video and boil it all down to the core essentials so that you can make the best choice for you in your game. Hey, my name is Ian. I'm the founder of EssentialTennis.com, where over the years I've helped more than a million tennis players improve through my videos, my podcast, and my best-selling book on Amazon. Huge thank you to Diadem Sports for making this video possible and also supplying the strings that we're going to be testing. Let's start by defining the big three of tennis strings in the order that they were introduced to the game of tennis. And then we'll also do a play test with two high-level players so that you can fully understand the pros and the cons and make the best choice for yourself. The main categories of strings are natural gut, nylon, and polyester or poly. Natural gut strings were first produced in France in 1875 by a man named Pierre Babelot, which probably sounds familiar if you're a fan of tennis. Throughout the span of tennis history, natural gut strings are fabled for their comfort, their playability, their feel. They just have an incredible and unique feel off the racket. It feels like the ball is just pocketing in longer. It gives you really good touch and feel. And it's also very easy on the body because they're very soft and pliable. Another big asset or benefit of natural gut strings is they hold tension in the racket longer than any other type of string out there. On the downside, they're very, very expensive. They range from $40 to $50 just for the strings alone, not for the labor of actually putting the string in your racket. And if you want to experiment with natural gut, because maybe you've got arm issues or elbow issues, or you really just prefer that extreme touch and feel, then I, I highly recommend you check it out if you don't mind the price. But please be sure that the person putting natural gut in your racket is highly experienced because it takes a special skill set to put them in without damaging them and doing it correctly takes a little bit of extra care and knowledge. Natural gut was the only game in town for tennis players until the 1950s when tennis players started to want a more affordable way to put new strings in their rackets. And at that point, companies started to experiment with nylon as a way to create strings that were not natural gut. And today, synthetic gut strings are mostly still made out of nylon. Most synthetic gut strings have a core of nylon, and then there's wrapped around that solid core other fibers and strands and kind of a, a layer of additional nylon wrapping around the outside of it. And that helps increase the feel and the playability and also helps the durability a little bit. But when compared to natural gut, synthetic gut strings don't last nearly as long they break easier, they don't hold their tension as well as natural gut, and they don't have that same feel and touch that natural gut does either. But on the upside, they're way cheaper. You can get synthetic gut strings ranging from $4 on the low end up to about $13 on the high end, which is an incredible deal for tennis players unless you break lots and lots of strings, which we'll talk about in a minute. There we go. Just trying to trying to hit spin. There we go. Yep. These two guys are pretty high level players, so obviously they're used to much stiffer strings. What I'm curious about to hear from each of you is what type of player, level, game style, uh, swing speed, do you feel like these strings are best suited for? And what type of players are these absolutely not suited for? I honestly felt compared to my previous setups, uh, over the past 10 years is that it's very, very slick. There's not a lot of snapback. Mm. Yeah. And even now, I don't know if you guys can tell, but after the 17 and a half minutes of hitting, there's already not fraying, but you see a lot of the tennis ball fuzz on the mains and the crosses of uh, the oh. relatively near sweet spot. People that rely on heavy spin and heavy <laughs> acceleration really should not try this. Yeah. This is more for flatter shots, flatter stroke mechanics, or someone that takes balls early on the rise just to get your opponent off the court. So who would you say it's for? What level player, what style of game? Uh, anywhere from, I would say, even 2-5 all the way to maybe your classic baseliner in the mid 4-0 range okay. would really benefit from this. Just because you don't rely, typically speaking, on heavy, heavy topspin, heavy, massive acceleration. And you're just working on the mechanics of redirecting the ball without messing up your elbow like some of these stiffer strings I've tried in the past. Yeah. Yep. I would generally agree with that too. I, I would also say that maybe for um, younger juniors, like 12 and below, who um, 
you know, maybe couldn't generate the racket head speed to get a heavy topspin ball anyway, but the little extra boost of power doesn't hurt them. If you hit like more of a touch game, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it. If you hit spin, I wouldn't recommend it. If you're maybe like a little underpowered and you're looking to add a little more depth to your shots, that's the sort of thing I would say if you don't hit like, you know, if you hit a flatter ball like Mark said. Yeah. But I mean, for me, the, 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 the main demographic that I would shoot this to would be to um, junior players who are still growing and, you know, I wouldn't want to put a harsh, you know, kind of a stiff strength into their into their racket and maybe have them feel a little bit of, of tension in their arms from maybe, you know, if they don't have perfect technique and they can't swing that fast. So that that's generally who I, I see synthetics as, as best for, or, you know, for maybe beginning players who don't really have, you know, the strength to swing fast. Another type of nylon strings is called multi-filament. They're called multi-filament because instead of a solid core of nylon in the center, Multi-filament strings are made up of hundreds of tiny strands of nylon woven together into one round piece of string. So the result of a multi-filament string is one that has much more playability and feel and touch, kind of like natural gut, but not to the same degree. It's in between a regular synthetic gut, which has that solid core of nylon, and a natural gut, which is made out of natural fibers. Multi-filament is somewhere in between and like synthetic gut, it doesn't last as long as natural gut. It doesn't hold its tension as long as natural gut, but it's not nearly as expensive either. Again, it's in between a synthetic gut and a natural gut, ranging anywhere from about 12 or $13 on the low end up to about 21, 22, $23 up on the high end for a good multi-filament string. So if you're the type of player that likes the type of feel that natural gut brings to the table and doesn't want to spend a fortune getting that type of feel, then multi-filament strings are a really good option. Ooh, I like this. <laughs> They're pretty different. Yes, right uh, well, the after that, miss it, yeah. Yeah, this is a really yeah, different, this is really different feel. It's like really deep pocketing. Yeah. I thought I wouldn't be able to feel the difference between synthetic gut and multi. Oh, no, no, no. This, this is, is almost as much of a difference as uh, poly and synthetic gut. Yeah, wow, no, I agree. Really? I mean, they're, they're almost, almost. Scott and Mark, who is this string for and who is it definitely not for? This is for touch players. I mean, okay. in, in a word, it's for touch players. There's so much more pocketing. You know the, the the feel of the ball off the you string. Explain like how well, how like, do you actually feel that? Um, I I feel like the strings are on the ball just a tiny bit longer when when it comes in this way. There's more they're more elastic yeah. than the, than the synthetic, and from it you get a more softer feel. Um, you know the, the 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 conceit behind it is that it's supposed to be closer to natural gut than any other strings, and give you more of a more power and more spin than say a synthetic. Who's this string not for? This is not for string breakers, for sure. Again, you know, there, there's not, not, there's a little yeah, bit. It almost of, looks like natural. Yeah, yeah. There, there's some wear. There's not notching like there was in, in the synthetic. But I would say that I would expect to, to go through this in a matter of a couple hours. Yeah. Um, not, it's it's more for people who who might have elbow problems because it's, it's significantly softer than the synthetic for sure. And and I can tell from experience that it's significantly softer than. Um, the poly as well. It has a nice feel. Uh, you know, it, it has a high level of playability. You know, if you're not a, a pure power player and you you play, you know, maybe like doubles primarily, or you're you're a touch player and you you, you lob the ball and hit drop shots, it'd be a great great string. Mark, you so, said it was a big difference between oh, the synthetic gut and the multi. Huge, huge what, what was the gap for you? Uh, the gap was this provided less power in itself, mm -hmm. so I felt a lot more comfortable yeah. accelerating through the ball, especially oh, on ground yeah. strokes, because I could generate more spin, not as much spin as the shape or uh, around poly, without the ball, without the fear of the ball like yeah. flying out. That's super interesting. So it feels like in general, the softer string, you can't swing as fast, but this actually felt like you had more control. Yeah, but I think it's because of the elasticity that's yeah. like 10% yeah. better. It's 10% more elastic, uh, which gives me more control as a tennis player. But also, um, again, it's, most synthetic guts kind of have th that slick coating. I don't know if that's by design or just that's how synthetic guts are. This doesn't feel that. It's a little bit more textured. It's more. It's a little bit more textured, and that's why I think I can feel the ball significantly better than the synthetic gut. 
In the late 1990s, another new type of string burst onto the scene as professional players started hitting with more power, more spin, bigger, faster swings than ever before. And that string is called polyester or poly. Unlike nylon strings like synthetic gut or multi-filament, polyester strings are made out of just one solid core of stiff, rigid material. And its strengths are, it's very strong. It's really hard to break polyester compared to nylon strings like synthetic gut or multi-filament. And again, on the pro side of the equation, because the strings are stiff and they snap back into place after they move, it allows for much bigger swings, produces much more spin. Also on the negative side of the equation for some players is polyester strings don't produce nearly as much energy or power off the racket face on their own. You have to produce much more of the energy and speed to hit a big shot off the racket face. And for a high level player, that's actually a big plus. A high level player doesn't want the natural power of a natural gut or a nylon string like synthetic gut or multi-filament. Somebody who swings with huge, fast swings is looking for control. They want extra spin. They want the ball to stay in play and not launch. They don't want their racket to be like a trampoline. Now you can achieve that by stringing natural gut or synthetic gut or multi-filament really, really, really tight meaning like the poundage of how tight you're pulling the strings is really high, but polyester strings gives you much more of that control feel naturally, kind of automatically. Now, also on a negative side of the spectrum, polyester strings put much more shock into the body, whereas natural strings are very soft and forgiving. And synthetic gut and multifilament strings, depending on which one specifically, can be very soft and forgiving. So if you have arm issues, if you get pain like in your shoulder or your elbow, polyester is probably not for you. And if you don't have a relatively fast swing, polyester probably also not for you. Polyester strings also tend to lose their tension pretty quickly. So if you're looking to leave strings in a racket for a long time and maintain the feel, polyester is probably not for you. Price of polyester strings without labor putting the strings in the racket ranges from $8 on the low end all the way up to $20 on the high end. So obviously you guys are used to polyester strings. Obvi. So keeping that, in, so it's kind of keeping yeah, your, yeah. your personal like preferences out of it. Who is this string for? And who is it absolutely not for? It's not for people who don't take fast swings of the ball. Okay. It's not for people who live off touch and, and, and flat balls. It's, it, you know, it, it requires you to really take a big cut at the ball to get the effect that's desired by the string. You know? What level roundabout do you personally feel like there's that tipping point where it's like, okay, now you're swinging fast enough that it, it makes you know, sense? It depends. I think you could be a 3.5. I mean, according to Mark, we're all 3.5, so <laughs> definitely we're polished. And, and a YouTube 3.5? <laughs> yeah, YouTube 3.5 YouTube for sure. Okay. But you know, three five, four oh, four oh, definitely. That would be a fast can, swing in three five. It'd be a fast swing in three five, but I think that it's you know a, a ascending three five. You know, not not a not a plateauing three five. Sure. You know, four O's, guys who can hit the ball big, but are still trying to you know tame their swings. You know, and definitely four fives and up. You know, should definitely give uh, Polly's a look if they're playing kind of a, a power and like a aggressive baseliner game. Mark? I'll go off of play styles because I do agree about, generally speaking, uh, a low to a mid 4-0 singles player with heavy acceleration. Yep. Give it a try if you don't have elbow problems. But concerning play style, if you're a serve and volleyer, do not do shape polys no, or no. polys in general. No. Uh, definitely not this one because this is a spin monster. And in terms of how much power it gives you, not only does it give you zero, it actually takes power away sometimes by the way it feels just because it's darn near impossible to basically have a closed racket face accelerate and have the ball sail along. It, it's, it's almost impossible. If you do want to generate massive topspin, at least give it a try if you don't have elbow problems, if you're not a servant volleyer, if you don't have a one-handed backhand. It's just be prepared for the lack of power that it gives you and string significantly lower than you would uh, a multi-filament or synthetic gun. So I've got these three extra sets of string and I want to give them away. So just leave a comment below this video and a week after it publishes, I will pick three random winners and all you gotta do is just send me an email and I'll ship them out to you. So just leave a comment down below.
Now you know the main types of tennis string, the pros and cons, and hopefully which type of string is probably best for you. But if you have more questions, please let me know in the comments down below. I'll be happy to help. And please understand, we could not even close get to everything today. We haven't even talked about different tensions, different gauges or thicknesses of string, or different hybrid setups where we have different strings in the mains and the crosses. So please let me know in the comments down below what other gear, string, racket, maybe grip topics that you'd like to hear about in the future. And I'll be happy to get those set up. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to use code ET15 at diademsports.com for 15% off your full order.